Today, we're going to look at another Amazon design interview question for designing a warehouse for a bicycle rental app. As usual, we have uh, five steps. We start with the first step, the entities and relationships. We'll, we'll think about what a bicycle rental app would do. Um, a person would be able to um, open the app, um, set up uh, themselves as a renter, and uh, uh, when they find a, a bicycle of that company uh, at, at a location, they can start renting it, pick the bicycle up, drive it to the next, uh, drive it wherever they want, when they want to return it, they can return it either at the location they started or return it in other location that the company operates in. Um, and then um, they could stop um they could go into the app and say returned and then um, set up a payment card payment and then make a payment um and then um they're done with that rental uh, relationship uh, and then they could they could come back and rent again some other day um but for today they're done with that relationship so this seems to be the use case um so to have that um uh, to accomplish that what we would need is we want to have, whenever the renter sets up uh, their profile, we need a renter table uh, where we have all the rental information, including their um, uh, credit card, uh, their name, their uh, uh, profile, such as email, something to identify them, uh, such as email or a phone, phone number. We also need to have a database of all the bikes that the company has. So we want to make sure we have the bike information, such as um, what make it is, what size it is, what what type of bike it is, um, possibly uh, like if it's if it's linked at a location right now, which location that that bike is linked to right now. Uh, if uh, like what type of status is it in? Is it in a uh, usable status? Is somebody renting the bike right now? Uh, is the bike being um, like uh, held for repairs or is it uh, usable for somebody to actually rent or is it being rented by somebody else so those are um, the typical statuses they could be other statuses as well as we uh, dig deeper um, the other um, kind of table uh, data we'll need is payment information um, but this comes after somebody rents a bike um, and then um, Rent or rents a bike that would actually need some rental information and after they rent they'll have to make the payment information so probably another thing would be the rental transaction itself so this would connect the renter with the bike and the rental uh, transaction could be um, you could have uh, one renter do multiple transactions um, on multiple bikes um, so that that could um, always be the case. Similarly, one bike could be part of multiple rental transactions, uh, either with the same renter or with multiple other renters. So that that would uh, uh, be the relation. Uh, and for each rental transaction, uh, we would expect to have one uh, payment uh, record um, to show that the payment has been uh, in progress, uh, debited, completed, uh, so those kind of things, uh, pending. So those kind of statuses. So we want to sh store payment status, payment, uh, payment card information, um, and all that. So this is what we need. Um, I think the most, uh, like any kind of PII we have is probably the customer name. Um, I don't think we have the date of birth or something like that, but we, we do have the contact information that could be some PII information. We do have payment card information, so PCI information. In in uh, we'll have to store it in um, in the renter app or in the payment uh, table. So um, that would be uh, uh, sensitive information as well. To tie all this up, uh, a rental transaction could start from location one and go to location two. Uh, so we need to store all the locations uh, this company operates in. Um, that would include, um, say, either location coordinates or location um, ID number, 
or in fact both um, so an id number that uh, locates each uh, location number uh, location uh, that this company operates in a location coordinate um, and then um, also those locations would be uh, linked to the rental transaction where if somebody takes the bike at location a and then returns it at location a the, uh, the start transaction uh, the start location for rental transaction and the end location of the rental transaction would be location a uh, if they do it in a different place they rent it a and return it b then that would re reflect in the rental transaction record so these are i think uh, what we need as entities uh, and relationships we'll next see what are the business questions that we need to answer uh, to be able to uh, build a data warehouse so to to have a data warehouse um, is different from having an operational uh, consideration we don't need to have like a third normal form or a second normal form uh, database uh, we could have redundancies but we would want to answer the questions faster so what are the questions would, would somebody running a rental database ask in my mind i think we would want to understand what would be the revenue that we generate so we want to know how much revenue we generate every month we also want to compare it with the previous month of the same year or this quarter versus previous quarter so something like that we would also need uh, revenue breakdown by month by state so not only by uh, month but also by state or location uh, we would also want to um, find out like how much percentage of time the rental bikes have been um, stable that is usable versus when they are how much percentage of time they have been unusable um, so within that we might also want to look at some trends as to are there uh, certain bicycle brands that break down much more often than the other if so can we list the first top three that break down more often uh, than the other so these are questions if i were i were uh, thinking about what a business would think about i would come up with these um, there may be others but another one i can think of the last one i can think of is uh, the renters from a renter perspective so if a renter has rented um, in the last month but in the last month they have not rented um so i mean they've rented in february but they've uh, since march started they've not rented um i would want to i would want to capture those <coughs> renters so that i could probably uh, either give them a promo code or uh, softly nag them by pro providing a no notification or uh, be able to capture their attention in any other way uh, so that i can get them to be a recurring customer so that would probably be one other thing i would think of um, and i would also want to uh, make sure i collect from all the people who have rented so if somebody has not paid for the last two days i would want to send them a text message to ensure that um, they know that they have they've not paid and they'll have a access to quickly go there click the link on the text message and quickly make a payment um, so i would like to do these kind of things so these are all the business questions i can think of at least these are the categories of business questions i can think of i think with that i, I want to dive into uh, trying to see what are the facts uh, based on the measures we saw in the earlier questions what are the facts we want to design i think um, I'm, I'm also going to go through uh, the dimensions as well uh, in the same slide so let, let let's let's think about the measures so we wanted we spoke about revenues um, we spoke about uh, revenues broken down by month by location we spoke about um, renters who have not paid their dues renters who have not rented in the past so we want to know about the renters and how much renting uh, how uh, what when they have rented earlier so we, we also want to know um, like the status of the bicycle itself and when the bicycle started to be in good state when the uh, un unusable state and when it um, it started to be in usable state so we want to know the transition or the time when it actually uh, was usable 
and the time when it actually was not usable so we want to know that so given that um, I, I, I want to reiterate uh, with these uh, visual points so we need to measure the revenue by date by location if you want to have the rentals that don't have a payment yet you can actually link that later to a renter if you find what are the renters rentals that don't have, don't have payment and then we can figure out which rental is linked to which renter that that would be ideal you would want to know the bike status changes and we want to know when the bike status changed from usable to unusable um, that would enable us to calculate the percentage uh, of time um, the bike is in unusable state so the model that I think would fit for this would be to have at the center of all this the rental as the fact uh, the dimensions that surround that are like locate uh, are the renter where the renter ID would uh, would be able to look it up location start and location end which link to the locations dimension then uh, the the payment dimension is linked by the payment ID. We also have uh, dimension bikes uh, and the dimension dates. So the dimension bikes would have information about the bike brand, the bike's current status, um, the bike's uh, uh, make, model number, um, and stuff like that. Uh, and the um, we, we could also have uh, like acquisition dates, the start date, uh, since we have this, uh, probably that will be useful to uh, calculate the age of the bike. Uh, so so we'll, we'll later know when to replace it. So all that information can be stored in uh, the bike's dimension. The dates dimension um, like links from the rental fact, and it also has summarize uh, around which month and which year and which quarter it rolls down under. This helps us uh, um, like, aggregate the revenue from the fact rental table based on quarter. And if we aggregate that and join with the location table, um, and if we are able to, um, I'm assuming that whenever uh, somebody picks up a bike, uh, the start location and end location would be in the same um, state. If not, we would have to uh, clarify which, uh, whether we, we need to use the start, uh, or the end for calculating uh, the the state based revenue uh, so that that is uh, so with with the location dimension date dimension and uh, fact rental uh, we we will be able to figure out the revenue by month and by location uh, using the payment uh, status in the dimension uh, payment connecting it to the rental fact we will know which um, rentals have happened two days ago, but the payment status is not yet uh, like completed. So those can be easily found, and we can we can link that back to the renter dimension to figure out which renters have not paid, and then we can notify them. So that that use case as well can be satisfied by that. Um, at the rightmost, we have a bike status history, and this is to satisfy the status where we want to know. When the bike um, like changes status from uh, usable to unusable, um, like when when somebody rents the bike, uh, we want to change the current status in the bike dimension uh, to be um, rented, and then when they when they return the bike back, we want it back to be available. So that that can be found um, in the dimension bike table itself. So there's a current status column there that will be updated every time. But we also want to want to keep um, uh, the history of the status in bike uh, status history, um, especially when um, when the bike uh, goes from uh, usable to unusable status, um, and uh, that that can help uh, quickly calculate um, like which bike is available when um, and not. Uh, all these dimensions are uh, type 2 dimensions. Given that uh, bike is a type 2 dimension, now I'm uh, inclined to think that um, if you are able to store all the uh, like uh, 
bike status changes in the dimension bike table um, it would make the dimension bike table much larger based on every bike status change um, but we would be able to find the history based on that table as well so we'll have to think whether we need an additional table to get the bike status history or do we can we use it just in the bike dimension table and uh, i think uh, calling the bike status history table um, a fact table probably does not make sense because it just has the status and the time changed um, that is uh, probably just a snowflake dimension of the bike bikes dimension table so that must be another dimension table as well so this uh, the the table at the rightmost end uh, should again be denoted as a dimension table that's that's all i have uh, for today uh, if you have any comments on how to do this uh, model better uh, if you think of other ways uh, this could be solved uh, please let me know uh, in the comments below